Today's youth need teachers, volunteers, and most of all, well, they need you. I'm Doug Edwards, and I'm going to be talking with real youth mentors and students to give you the knowledge you need to be the best youth worker possible. This is Youth Worker on Fire. Mistakes guaranteed. Wise as serpents, harmless as doves. You know, we've talked about that scripture several times. And it's important that we try to to be, you know, pretty smart and wise and kind to people and, and not bring any harm or any sense of anything that would cause people to, to be upset. You know, you're going to do that. It's going to happen. You'll make mistakes in your ministry and in life. Had some of my mistakes been avoided, though, there were certain events and interactions that would have been life-changing for many people. I could have just quit or given up believing my mistakes were too big to overcome. Could have been too embarrassed to continue on. And there's many times that I thought I was not going to be able to continue on. I was in a very politically charged but small city in early student ministry. Now, it seemed like uh, there were politicians everywhere. I worked with many of their students, their middle school and high school children, that is, as their area campus life director in Youth for Christ. It just so happened I had a friend who worked in the White House. She was in charge of the president's schedule one term and the president's wife's schedule the next term. I would call to talk to my friend who I had known since high school, and I would call her and talk to her while she was working at the White House. The president and his wife were outwardly supportive of of Youth for Christ and the Campus Life program. I asked if it was a possibility that the president or his wife would come and speak to us in our area. It was set in place. My friend said yes. The president's wife was scheduled to come to our area at my request to be supportive of our program. And then it happened. I was just being a friend and was always joking around. I said something that in regular circles, I said something that in regular circles would have been a joke and no one would have thought a thing of it. But this was not a normal circle of friends. I heard my friend say, Oh, Doug. And my heart dropped. I knew I had said the wrong thing and that the event was canceled. I don't even remember what I said. Maybe it was my mind protecting me from the embarrassment is the reason I've forgotten. But I remember saying to my friend, it's not going to happen now, is it? And they said, no. What you say, who you say it to, and where you are when you say it matters. I learned from that event to be very careful about what I said and to whom. Lives would have been changed. My credibility for the gospel in a community would have been elevated. Funds would have been raised to develop a better program. My relationship with my friend would have, been, would have not been hurt. All of that because I was joking around in an atmosphere that required my awareness to be an adult when adults were present. As time went on, I would press forward and have other wins and would also have other losses. God still did great things in that early ministry, which is what God does when he has an agenda. To this day, I grieve over that great loss because of my inability to read the room, even though I was on the phone. I'm not using names because I did not have permission for my friend, and I have lost contact with them. It's best I don't compound a mistake with a mistake. You will encounter somewhere or sometime in your life when you will say or do something innocently and immediately realize what you've, well, what you've done. There will also be times when you will say or do something that you didn't even know was a problem and the room will go cold or someone will tell you in the distant future what you did and you will be unable to correct it. In every situation, go praying and asking God to put his words in your mouth, and that is a reference from Isaiah, when God said, I'm putting my words in your mouth, and to guard your mind and words from hurting and separating people. Doug Fields, who was a youth pastor at Saddleback Church, 
at the time he said this when I was in a conference with him. He said, I would often use sarcasm and would find later that I had offended a new student. Sarcasm, from my perspective, this is me talking now, is a cheap way to get laughs and often hurts someone. I used to use sarcasm quite a bit myself, but those are usually unthinking jokes, things that you have not set up or set ahead of time. When you're impressing people and talking to a crowd, it's important that we speak freely, but with protected words, if that makes sense at all. Proverbs 17, 27 says this, whoever restrains his words has knowledge, and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. And I'll say that first part, whoever restrains his words has knowledge. Our words and attitudes matter. We will make some mistakes. We should then humble ourselves and ask God for help and forgiveness and try to protect us and ask him to try to protect us from hurting people recklessly, unknowingly. When it's possible, make things right with people you've offended or hurt. Remember, Moses, King David, the Apostle Peter, and, well, most of Jesus' followers made some big mistakes. And in their weakness, God made them strong as they would go running to him for help and forgiveness, which he had told them to do. In some cases, he went running to them and said, get up, let's try again. 1 John 1, 9 is your reference for God's forgiveness. There's a lot in your life and a lot in mine. Mistakes are guaranteed. If you're doing anything for God, if you're doing anything good in this world, mistakes are going to happen. If you're a human being, mistakes are going to happen. The point is not whether or not we're going to make mistakes. The object of this is how do we get up? How do we keep going? And do we realize that mistakes are going to happen? But God knows how to correct our mistakes and make our weaknesses into victories and success. Have a great day. Youth Worker on Fire. See you next time. You've been listening to the Youth Worker on Fire podcast. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and tell your friends. Also, leave a comment and tell us what you think. Stay tuned for more informative episodes.